Welcome to Thought for February the 18th. Our readings are taken from Exodus 29, Psalm 85 and 86, and Mark chapter 14. And our thought is, let the scriptures be fulfilled. Our New Testament reading of Mark's Gospel is the heart-stirring 72 verses of his 14th chapter. It records the Last Supper that Jesus shared with his disciples and its age-lasting simplicity has had heart-stirring meaning for his genuine disciples in every generation since that time. After the Supper there follows the heart-searching time in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prays, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Verse 36. The individuality of the Father and Son is so evident here. Jesus sets us an example that wherever scriptural principles are involved, we should follow our Saviour's example and say to our Heavenly Father, not what I will, but what you will. These words make it plain that the theology of the Trinity, which the Catholics invented centuries later, has no place in the mind of the true believer. Judas now comes, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs. Verse 43. Jesus does not resist. He says, Let the scriptures be fulfilled. And so they were. The Old Testament has several prophecies concerning this. These scriptures also make it plain, as we read yesterday, that there will be a final time of trouble for our world. The words Jesus spoke then have a particular application for us now. Be on guard. I have told you all things beforehand. Chapter 13 and verse 23. Back in today's chapter, we note that what Jesus told the high priest, and we see its awesome meaning for us as we live with increasing anticipation of this event. He was warning the high priest, telling him, You will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Verse 62. The high priest will be there among the goats. What horror will fill his heart! But what a wondrous prospect of joy their fulfilment hold for us. Our thoughts go to the words of Paul when he described the coming events to the Thessalonians in his first letter to them. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. And where will the Lord be? Reigning from Jerusalem. The world will experience a new earth in which righteousness dwells, as Peter puts it in his final epistle in chapter 3, verse 13. May the scriptures be fulfilled very soon, and may we have the strength of faith to endure the coming tribulation with such anticipation of the wonders to follow. Thank you once again for joining us for Thought for the Day, where together we can open up the pages of God's Word, remembering that they are a lamp to our feet and a light to our path.